Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Verdi's Aida, the 1913 historical edition, which I saw at the Arena di Verona. The conductor was Julian Kovachev. The production was done by Gianfranco De Bossio. The choreographer was Susanna Egri, and the chorus master was Vito Lombardi. I was really excited about this particular production of Aida because this was the second time I saw this particular opera at the Arena di Verona. And when I heard that this was an entirely different production, I was really excited, especially for the cast of singers this production of Aida had to offer. With that said, let's get on to what I thought about the production and costumes. As if you ever want me to talk about how magnificent, elegant, and simply put, grand everything was in this production of Aida. I definitely love all of the grandiosity and that nobility that is so predominant in any Aida production. It was so vivacious, so full of life, so full of color, and simply put, magnificent. We also had our fair share of live horses and even men who circled around the arena, whether they be torch bearers or fanfare players, or even guards with spears. Everything about this production was so full of grandiosity. There were a lot of really great colors being used, like gold, and a lot of really warm colors to make this production of Aida come to life. And there were also two sphinxes on the opposite side of the stage, which I definitely liked. And of course, the choreography from all the dancers was fantastic. Whether it be the little Moors or all of the Egyptians in the triumphal scene, I have to say that every piece of choreography was really masterful and the costumes were equally as brilliant. Everything looked so fabulous that it was definitely a great feast for the eyes. So I'm not gonna mince words here about this particular production of Aida. Everything was such a visual, olfactory, and sensual feast that I was practically glued to my seat from beginning to end. Every, every hue, every color, everything was just so well done. From the warmer, brighter colors of the triumphal scene to the cooler, more shadowy moments of the Nile scene and even that of the tomb scene consisting of Radames, Aida, and Amneris. Everything about this production just spells pure grandiosity. And now we get to the singers, starting off with Hui He, who sang articular heroine Aida. I also saw her in this particular part three years ago at that very theater. And she continues to go from strength to strength, all thanks to her versatile and gorgeous Spinto soprano voice. She has been singing this role for many years and it shows how much she was able to understand this character. She was able to make Aida come alive with a lot of beauty and strength and so much nobility that I was practically left speechless at everything this wonderful Spinto Soprano had to offer. She had a lot of grace on stage, and she definitely knows how to play up that grace, which has definitely been her trademark feature, in my opinion. So, I'm not gonna mince words here about Hui He's Aida. She was definitely fine all throughout, all thanks to that full-sounding Spinto Soprano voice, and her expressivity as an actress was also well handled. Then we go to Radames, who was sung by a tenor who I have never heard of before, and thank goodness I heard him live and was completely satisfied with the results. His name was Hovhanes Haivazian, and boy, did he have an elegant sounding spinto tenor voice, which had that focus, clarity, and beauty which made him stand out well. He also had a very handsome stage presence, which made him dashing and tall and wonderful from beginning to end. But more than anything, 
his vocal resources as a true spinto tenor were in absolute evidence. From the way he sang Celeste Aida, especially of how he sang that high B flat in Crescendo, to his many duets with the Amneres and Aida of the evening, and even that of his scene with Ramphis. I thought he was able to be great as an overall singing actor, as he made a great use of his fine, dashing, spinto tenor voice, and he definitely had a good stentorian quality about that said voice. He was okay as an actor. Sure, he may not have had the overall fire and passion of Franco Corelli, but I still have to give him loads of credit for everything he's done, and I cannot wait to see his career go much further because Mr. Ivazian has a beautiful future ahead of him. I would love to see him perform in all the great opera houses like the Metropolitan Opera House, the Royal Opera House, Deutsche Oper Berlin, the Staatsoper Unter den Linden, the Bayerische Staatsoper, and many other great opera houses to suit this charismatic and wonderful Spinto tenor. He was certainly in his A-game tonight, and I was not disappointed in the slightest. Then we go to Giovanna Casolla, who is a veteran dramatic soprano singing the role of Amneris. I have been following Madama Cosola for many years. I first started hearing about her ever since I was about 12 or 13, and I was really amazed at the length and width of her repertoire. Throughout her career, she sang the spinto soprano roles of Adriana Le Couvreur and Madalena de Guagny, the true dramatic soprano roles of Tosca, Turandot, and even Santuzza, and even the mezzo roles of Carmen, Eboli, and Amneres. The fact that she has a very huge repertoire was something that I was really excited to witness. I managed to hear a couple of clips of her on YouTube, and my impression of her voice, especially in her prime, was that it was a steely, metallic, and really dramatic instrument. And she certainly held on to that steely quality tonight. For someone who is currently in her 70s, she still had a lot of vocal resources to play off of superbly. And even though there were some chest notes that were a little bit absent in the scene between Aida and Amneris, I thought that Madame Cosola did a fine job in terms of her characterization. And of course, her judgment scene was superb. Yes, I would have loved to have a much younger singer like what we've been having today with the likes of Anna Smirnova, Anita Rachfelishvili, Ekaterina Zemenchuk, Ekaterina Gubanova, Mona Zom, and maybe even Yano Tamar. But regardless of all that, I still have to give Signora Casola a lot of kudos for what she had to pull off as Amneris. She definitely showed a lot of vocal longevity in this role. She showed no signs of tiring, even though there were some chest notes that were a little bit absent. But despite all that, her characterization was fine. She was able to be in tip-top vocal shape, and she was a very fine vocal interpreter of Amneris, a role that she has been singing for many years and a role in which she has shown a lot of colors and a lot of passion and a lot of everything that she managed to give as Amneris. She certainly stole the show for me to the point where this opera could have been called Amneris just because of Giovanna Casola's superb interpretation of the part. Then we go to Carlos Almaguer, who sang the role of Amonazro. I have been wanting to see this great Italianate dramatic baritone live, and he did not disappoint in any shape or form. He had a richness to his voice. He had an expressivity and a beauty which made him stand out superbly, and his stage presence was like a great big wall of fortitude 
and it was a very handsome one, very charismatic, very strong and masculine, which is definitely the right word to use for someone as wonderful as Senor Almaguer. He has that masculinity in his voice and in his presence, which makes him come alive. He has enough charisma to hold the evening, and he certainly had a lot of vocal resources at his disposal. He was able to use that powerful sounding, dramatic, baritone voice to his advantage, and he was simply put, magnificent. He was remarkable as Amonazro that my jaw practically dropped every time he opened his mouth. His characterization was superb. He was able to make this character come alive, and he was an overall great singing actor. Hugo Guallardo was a handsome king of Egypt, all thanks to that round and rich basso cantante voice and his tall and elegant stage presence. And he certainly made the best out of this character part, all thanks to that tallness which he managed to give off. And more than anything, he definitely used his basso cantante voice to the best of his abilities, thus making him a fine and dashing singing actor, and he managed to do the role well. Dejan Vachkov was fine as Ramphis. Yes, I would have wanted to have a true basso profondo a la Gottlob Freck or Kurt Burma sing this particular role, but I still have to give lots of kudos to Dejan Vachkov for his fine characterization, and he was able to make Ramphis come alive all thanks to that sturdy and strong stage presence and that fine basso cantante voice which he was able to emit so well. And his interpretation of the judgment scene along with the chorus was really, really fabulous. We also had such wonderful singing from Antonello Cheron's full voiced and wonderful messenger and Elena Borin's lyrical and lovely high priestess. So overall, the singing was excellent. From veterans like Giovanna Casola, who sang Amneris, to the fresher talents of Dejan Vachkov, who sang Ramphis, everyone was magnificent. And the conducting done by Yulian Kovachev was fine, even though there were times that Tempe did tend to be a little bit speedy for my tastes. There were times I would have loved to have the Tempe a little bit slower on some occasions and a little bit more well paced, but I still have to give him a good amount of credit for bringing in a good amount of excitement where it needed to be. And the chorus and orchestra of the Arena di Verona were absolutely great. So overall, with a marvelous production, fine singing from a great cast of singers, and fine conducting done by Maestro Yulian Kovachev, I have to say that this particular production of Aida was great in its own special way. And for those of you who watched this particular production of Aida, what did you think of it? Was there a singer who stood out to you so much, probably because he or she was a great actor or knew how to phrase everything so well? Did you feel like the production really caught your eye magnificently? Or was there something that just didn't really hold up? Comment below and let me know. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in much later for my review of Bellini's La Sonambula, which was live from the Victorian Opera, starring Jessica Pratt, Paolo Pecchioli, and Carlos Enrique Barcenas. So until then, good night, everybody.